Hello, beautiful soul. Do you or somebody you know want to manifest the love of your life? Would you recognize your soulmate if you bumped into them? And are you actually ready to share your heart and receive love? Well, all of these questions are really important because if you don't know and love yourself, if you aren't even open to truly manifesting that love relationship, if the universe dropped them right in front of you, you might refuse them. Yep, just like Ofkia Takens did. She is one of the contributing authors to our new book, Manifesting Love. And while she was at university working in a bookshop, her future husband walked in and he was spellbound. And he began pursuing her and for some strange reason, she kept refusing him and blocking him and pushing him away. You'll find out a little bit more about why and you'll get to hear the happy ending to their magical love story. Well, Kia Takens, as usual, it is such a pleasure and a gift to connect with you. Thank you so much for being a part of this book project for Manifesting Love. Wow. <laughs> I'm also very happy that I did my contribution with my love story. Very precious. Yeah. Thank you for, thank you for having me in the book. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know what's very interesting? This is a book about how to manifest love, how to make love come to you or find you. And, you know, some people in their, in their stories, they've given specific instructions on how they called forth love or how they prepared themselves. But yeah. your story is very, <laughs> very different. Your story includes all the ways that you tried to get away from the yeah. love of your life, right? Mm -hmm. I was protecting myself. Mm -hmm. I, and think so. I think that's important. And the reason why I really wanted to include this story in the book is because some of us are not aware, just like you were when you were a university student, you were not aware of some of the shadow side of you and, and the reasons why you were pushing away love. Is that right? Not, yeah, not at all. No, no, I didn't know, no. Yeah, so, so tell us a little bit more about this idea because when you were at university, you were working in a bookstore to help pay for your studies and you were busy. You had lots of, you know, boys that were into you. You were doing your schoolwork. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, I was really, um, I had a lot of boyfriends and they all called Rob or Robert. So that was very special. And there was Case. So I, th I thought, he's a different one. So yeah. <laughs> maybe he's the one. I was interested to find one because I ending, was ending my university. But um, yeah. I didn't recognize the laugh. He was quite normal for me. I wasn't very impressed of him. I said, okay, another, another client of me in this bookstore where we met. So when he came into the bookstore, mm -hmm. you weren't instantly thinking like, oh, this is the future love of my life. You thought he was just another no, customer. No, he was just a customer. And I was giving literature courses on another university. So I was still a student, but I worked extra. and. I thought maybe he's my last client. I need to make progress to my literature group or something like that. So I asked him. So we started a small conversation. And afterwards, I go on with my work. And he was really fell in love with me. He was really interested in me. And he, he kept going by telephoning me and, and, and yeah writing me notes and passing by. But I thought, well, one of my clients, nothing special at all. But why why do you think you didn't? look at him like all the other boys that were chasing you i i was not ready myself and maybe i didn't love myself i think that that was also the thing i thought mm, love is not for me or and all the times it's the wrong guy so no i i i no i i didn't think i didn't think that he was the one no not at all but i hope to to meet somebody but i i was not open for it. So I thought, well, I crossed the bridge when I'm there, but I wasn't there yet. Yeah. So just being, f finishing my study, and that's what my mom also said, just finish your study. You have already passed so many exams um, in, in love, pain, and so now you have to, to go on and finish your study and find a job. Yeah. And learn. yeah, that was the story. Well, many of the stories in this book also touch on the theme of self-love. Like if yeah. we 
don't love ourselves, it makes it very hard to accept that someone will love us. Mm -hmm. Where do you think that came from for you? Why didn't you love yourself at that point in your life? Mm, I think I was from a big family and I have to really to, you know, how do you say that, to show up with myself and I thought I'm not ready for that yet. So I think it's really, really difficult uh, was it for me, Andrea, just to earn my money, to keep uh, take my own responsibility for myself and yeah, keep going. It, it, yeah, I didn't understand myself so much at that, in that time. It was really difficult for me, just earning my money, doing my things. No, not so much pleasure. So I was not on, on the right road yet. Mm -hmm. no. But the thing that's that's really fun about your story is that Case, your husband now of 30 yeah. plus years who I have met, he didn't give up. So he yeah. kept coming back and coming and calling and eventually... You, you agreed to like just speak to him so that he would stop calling, right? Yeah, and that was a very interesting call because I said to my colleagues so after work, so I call him for one minute just to say I don't want to drink something with him or something. So, and then we he keep asking me questions and it, it takes two hours, three hours, and then I have to go to the restroom and say, well, just give me your telephone number and I'll call you back. And then we half the night we talk, so yeah. I think. So I, I noticed that it was in, in the restroom and I look in the mirror and said, Ofke, what's going on with you? <laughs> what, has, what is the matter with this guy that you just go and, and, and talk again and again? It was so special. He was like a soulmate for me. Um, really. Yeah. And he asked a lot of questions and yeah. And he was so persistent. So what do you think makes a person, a, how do you define soulmate? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's a fate, how do you say, a fate or something, because it was so special in this bookstore. He, uh, he entered um, eight minutes after 1 p.m., and I started at 1 p.m. When, when, when he didn't, um, uh, when he be, had become earlier, I've never met him. So, yeah, I think this is no coincidence. It just happened, and and normally he's very, um, how do you say it, uh, He's not so persist, uh, persistent at all, but this time it was different. He also told his mom so. She's really special. Wow, then his wow. mom said, just go for it when you think she's the girl. Yeah. And so he bring me flowers and everything to, to, to show him his love for me. And I said, well, okay, nothing special. But I was really a bit, I'm, I'm not embarrassed, but I was almost flattered. I was flattered. I said, well, oh, boy. What's going on with me? <laughs> right. So over time, with his persistence yeah. and all of these conversations and asking all the right questions, it started to wear down yeah. your resistance. Yes, yes, yes. And I needed that. And that's why at the, at the end, he had such beautiful um, yeah, experience. We, we had we did long walks, long talks, but I was really confused. I, I lost myself. And... So the time we used, uh, yeah, I, I feel flattered. I, I, I'm from a big family, so all that attention, yeah, yeah I, I, I melted <laughs> a bit and say, wow, okay. So it opens bit by bit my heart to, mm -hmm. to, to accept the love and to receive the love and to love more myself also. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's a super beautiful story, and I want people to actually read each of these steps because Ofkia <laughs> was saying no and putting up blocks and barriers all along the way. So you have to read yeah. you yeah. have to read her story in the book to get the full picture of it. But I yeah. want to just shift a little bit to some of the work that you're doing today. Because yeah. through after your university studies, you mm -hmm. went on for additional training and education and you've become a Jungian psychologist yes. and helping other people to really go deep into their shadow and uncover archetypes. Mm -hmm. Talk to me, how do you feel that this approach, like archetypes and such, can help people get in touch with their shadow side and find out why they may be resisting love in this life? Yeah, I think really this is a point you're talking about now. Because the shadow side, the shadow side of the archetype, it's about accepting also your shadow side. It's not only the nice things, the light sides, 
it's it's what you are there when you also are able to embrace this negative this, this shadow side because we're not perfect at all so yeah, I think this help, can help a lot of people to find their love of their life and to open their heart because they have closed the heart because they think you're not good enough because it has been told to you when you're a kid, you're not good enough, you can do better, why are you doing the best of you, well, why don't you show the best of yourself? So there's archetypes of all those inner personalities we have. We have a few, yeah, we have a lot of them and, and, and we have to use them, but that's also my work in daily life now. So it's nice to tell about that, that to help people to open that closed treasure box so so they can put out the treasures and and look again to themselves. So yeah, so, so the they are the mirror of their soul, those inner personalities, so they can embrace them and yeah, make them happy. And then they are more able to meet and greet other people. Mm-hmm. To let them come in. Yeah. It starts with loving yourself. Well, yeah. I will. I'll put a link in this video description so people can look at some of the interviews that we've already done about archetypes. But but just to give us an idea, like we have all these different parts of ourselves. These archetypes are are aspects of our personality, yes. like um, the hermit or yeah. the magician or all of these different things. What do you think would be a couple of these archetypes that we might want to call forth? to help us manifest love, either love for ourselves or to call forth the love of our lives. I think the connector, when you're disconnected with yourself, is mm. really difficult to connect with another. But also, yeah, maybe yeah, it, it can be anywhere, the researcher, just to be more conscious about yourself. Who am I and what do I want? What is my purpose and what is my mission? That's what I help the people. So you can talk with these archetypes. So you can make commitments with them. So when you're afraid um, and you, you invite a connector, you, you have no fear anymore to connect with other people. Mm. So you're not a hermit anymore. When you act like a hermit, you live like a hermit, and then you can make a relationship with somebody. So I think it's really important um, to go outside and meet people and feel aligned with yourself. Who am I? So it's interesting to me, those archetypes, it's your inner dream team, what I tell you. And yeah, they help you to connect with other people and to connect with yourself. So to show up, don't hide anymore. So open your treasure box, find your key. That, that's, that's nice in my work that I help people to, to open up and show themselves. And like you do also with branding, who, I'm, who are they and who am I? And, and then, yeah, you will find the love. And if you had to go back in time and work with yourself, you, the wise Jungian psychologist that you are now, if you went back to you in college, what archetypes would you have called forth in the young Ofkia to help her? I think the teacher, I I would have, yeah, I wasn't aware of anything in my life, my archetypes or my talents, but I was educated as a Dutch language teacher so that's the archetype is very strong at this moment so i love to reach out and share my knowledge about things and after i became a psych- psychotherapist in, in Jungian therapy yeah it was my mission to share all those uh, knowledge and uh, so the teacher was already there but the connector was really protecting himself so it was really i in the bookstore i i meet two thousand uh, clients a day but well, I had a nice talk with them, but it was all reserved. Mm. And, and when I know now I'm a jester, I'm making jokes, and I didn't at that time, I was really reserved, be polite, be the nice girl, be the loyal girl. So, um, yeah, it changed a lot, luckily. And can you help me with that very much, just to show me who I am and how precious I could be for him, but also for myself. So, yeah. Yeah, I think right. that that's one of the things about the soulmate relationship as it is a beautiful mirror so even if we don't see these things in ourselves our beloved can reflect back to us yeah yeah and i i have told you this before (laughs) i would love to interview case to know like why didn't he give up like you said no multiple times shy normally so shy so he was really confused too so what i'm doing who is this woman (laughs) yeah so ask him. I, <laughs> I will. Think. Oh, it's. <laughs> I will. 
So one of the other things that is really unique about your approach to life and therapy is that you want people to believe that life is a game and we should play it, which I think kind of takes away some of the seriousness. Mm. If we're talking about calling forth a love relationship, do you think that manifesting love could also take on more of a game? Not like you're playing with people's hearts. I don't mean no, 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 like no. that. but I, I think not sometimes... I was too serious, too serious, yeah. and it's, I was so happy that I learned to, to to speak and to make jokes and 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 open up and and show my treasures. So yeah, people, yeah, it, it, it makes them happy, and really, it, it, it's it's worth it to to open up and. Uh, so yeah, I think it's it's really uh, necessary to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wonderful. Well, Ofkia, thank you so much once again for sharing your story in this book. Do you have any last recommendations for someone who is trying to meet the love of their life, their soulmate? Do you have any recommendations? Yes, I have for sure. I think it's very important to get a life with yourself in your life, to be more aware of who you are, and then your heart will open. And when you open your heart, you will find the love of your life. I think that's that's the most important thing uh, to share. Yeah, when you're ready, when you cross the bridge, when you're there, and I think this is where it is all about with love. You start with self-love, and then you can share your love, and you will meet. Yeah, that's 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 so important, um, and I'm so happy that I don't protect myself anymore. So people can come in with me, and they're welcome to meet and be their own archetypes because it brings me a lot. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, we have Ofkia's website here on screen and in the description, ofkiatakens.com. And if you connect with her, she's got some wonderful resources to help you meet your inner dream team. These are all of these archetypes that can help you not only in love, but in all areas of your life, your work, your career, and really wonderful healing resources. Let's play this game of love. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I love it. Thank you again, Ofkia. Thank you, Andrea, for having me and to explain about my love story. I hope it will help people to find a love in life. Amen to that. Okay. Amen. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this interview about manifesting love. Please be sure to visit our website so you can review all of the author interviews and get your copy of the book. Until we meet again, my friend, remember that love exists in this world even for you. So believe in it, connect to it, and manifest it. See you next time.